Hello, welcome in the IBP series powered by Camelot. Today, a very interesting topic. Let's get an overview of IBP time series in response and supply, not order based planning, only time series. And as usual, let's focus a little bit on the process before getting to the system. Tactical planning. As we see here on this slide, the tactical planning process is designed to cover the mid to long term planning and start first with bullet point one and two which are delivered from event planning either on the distribution set center, like the two, or directly on the customer, if you have modeled the customer in your supply chain network. Then you will run the heuristics optimizer or uh, finite heuristics in order to propagate the demand from the customer to the location, to the factory, to the supplier, by means of bill of material and bill of network which is the propagation of infinite requirement. In the case of heuristics, step one, two, three have created the infinite plan. Now we are interested in making this plan feasible. And that's the, the, the aim of step four, which is resolve and decide amendment into the planning by the planners, being the production planner, procurement planner, or transportation planner, to come and bring some adjustment into this plan in order to make it feasible. Once this is done, and it takes some time, by the way, then we get step five, which is we get now the constraint supply. Constraint supply being the, the, the quantities deliverable by the, the point of demand in the network, and possibly the constraint demand, like we see here, where whenever you model the customers and you, you start the planning from the customer, ending with the customer. So this is the global tactical planning process proposed by IPP time series. Some of, of the main hints of this tactical planning, it is a period-based planning, no order at all. This is not made for operational planning. If you intend to do so, you will be quite frustrated. This is usually weekly based, weekly planning, maybe monthly planning in huge uh, organization. You can extend the scope of your planning to the customer and to the vendor. It covers distribution, DRP, production with MPS, master production schedule, and also capacity planning, or rough cut capacity planning, and it's not a detailed production schedule. So if you need that, you have to go with S4 EPPDs. It starts usually with unconstrained demand, and in the best case, ends with a constrained supply, constrained demand. Not always. Most of the customer implement first a heuristics, for instance, which ends with a infinite plan. plan. You can, you can use demand prior, being prioritized by cost if you run optimizer or finite heuristics. And of course, it shares master data with the different modules of IBP and S4. You have three ways of running the plan. So the first one at the top is the heuristics, heuristics without shortage. It's a base and simple MRP engine, which is capable to progress through the network and go down the bill of material whenever requested, like on a factory. This is not using any cost. This is driven by master data like Quota. You need MRP skills with your people. Nothing more. It's good enough. It's a two-pass, meaning that you do the planning and the resolution is manual. So the step four, five, six okay, are manual. And it provides you normally an infeasible results. And that's because of the, the planner's activity that this plan can become a feasible one. And again, huh, tactical planning in me to long term, not operational. So it's very good anyway. Then the second option is finite heuristics. It behaves like a black box. It borrows a little bit of the optimizer in, and particularly in the, in the field of capacity leveling, uh, resolving some of the constraints. Okay. It gives you a finite plan, but not optimized. And then the full, uh, the best of, the best of breed option is the optimizer. No, no surprise. This is cost based. This is very complex to implement, and that's the best of breed, meaning the, the results are optimized. You have a optimized planning. And all these three options definitely share the same master data, transaction policies, and sourcing, sourcing data. Some further options and scenario with a time series. You can include some shelf life management. You can prioritize, like I just said, with an optimizer. You can be part of the full synchronized planning, which is proposed by SAP, by by the idea of time series would lie for the mid to long term planning and deliver some key figure to order based planning and or to PPDS in order to give the to give you the general framework decided by the tactical 
whereas the order-based planning and PPDS would further refine the, the view in their own horizon. What the time series does not support, for sure, this is campaign planning. Unless you use our options at, uh, at Camelot, we have a specific uh, engine for, cam for campaign planning. It does not provide any push planning capabilities unless you run optimizer with a very complex setup. So if you need push planning, this is happening in PPDS mostly. There is no tank planning for those of you with like chemicals and uh, pharmaceutical. No tank planning, only approximation by means of workarounds and configuration. And last but not least, there is no CDP, no characteristic dependent planning. It's only coming soon in order based planning. Time series is not capable of such. Why? Because in time series, there is no pegging between the different levels of the bill of material and the, the bill of network. Let's get to the system. Now. So we've seen already during the previous video, the content of demand planning. Let's not focus on that. Let's go tactical supply planning. We see here a number of views which are usable in tactical supply planning by means of SCM lab. So the cost, if you run the optimizer, you will definitely need cost. And therefore, this template is helping you to maintain the cost from a time phase perspective. You have the, some of the time phase master data values as well to be maintained, like quotas, like output ratio and so on. And they are maintained in this template. Then we propose a supply chain uh, alert cockpit dashboard, which covers production, transportation, demand, inventory as a summary of all alerts which can happen into your supply chain uh, while running tactical planning. Then there is an overview of results from the heuristics and heuristics finite, and uh, the similar one, but for optimizer. And then we have created three views, dedicated view for production planner, which we call production planner, transportation planner, and procurement planner. Not only that, but we also have the preparation of SNOP supply review and the KPIs in order to better assess the, the, the performance that you, you get out of the tactical plan. So for this demo, let's simply go to heuristic overview. We start the visit, we start the journey from the demand perspective, going step one, two, and three. So from step one and two, we see here the consensus demand being defined by the customer and the product. And we see what the demand planning has given us as a consensus demand plan by each couple of product customer. This, this is for this customer two, customer three, and so on and so forth. And what do we see here is the system answer from the planning perspective, which is, by the way, here an infinite planning. Therefore, whatever is requested, the system says always, yes, you're going to get it. And we also see here that some of the quantity are delivered, like the 44, are shipped out from this DC toward this customer one week earlier because there is a lead time. Okay, 36 and so on. Next, the transportation view. Again, this is an overview huh, to better understand the global flow of the material planning <coughs> being done in heuristics. So and here we see that for this product at LDC1, so therefore a DC distribution center per, per location, we have a stock position and the system tells us, ah, I'm replenishing from location PP1. I'm replenishing this quantity. There is a demand. And by the way, the, the replenishment has just followed what the demand is. Again, in finite. If I need to do further adjustment, this is the way we adjust the plan in, uh, in IVP. You can use adjust transportation receipt here. We'll see adjust production and adjust procurement. Okay. And we see that PP01 delivers this location for this product. And PP01 also delivers possibly DC02. But here. Third, production. The production is a, an abstract of the production requirements on this product. And of course, therefore, only where we the production happens in PP01 here. And we see that currently we have a production plan being calculated by the system during the last heuristics because of the different dep dependent demand which have been propagated from the downstream uh, network upstream to the to the factory okay this generates requirement on component on one end and also requirement on capacity let's see that capacity display so we go 
So we see we see that the capacity requirement, which are the blue bar here, is going much higher than the, the available capacity, so-called capacity supply. Okay, is going much higher because we run heuristics as a as a planning uh, engine. So therefore, this one disregards the capacity limitations and only says, "I need all this." It's also a very important uh, information because we know how much capacity, in fact, we would need to cover this current demand, dependent uh, sorry demand plan. Okay. Then we have the component view, which is the component requirement view out, uh, re, uh, out the output of the planning run. And on this product, for instance, which was the top product we are analyzing, there is requirements on the semi-finish SF here, you can see. There is requirement on those semi-finished goods and also on raw material, which is even the, uh, a level down in the bill of material for this and this quantity. Okay. And then last but not least, we can further see a procurement view on this quantity, this quantity being the requirements, or do they or, or, or are they replenished by the systems, for instance, for these raw materials here. And that is to show in fact the full process of, uh, of, of the planning in tactical planning in time series. And the process of planning is let's let's make the things moving a little bit. Let's say I've, I'm changing on the fly the demand to 900 here for this period. I'm changing here to uh, 2,500 for this one. And then you can simulate and say, I want to run heuristics without shortage. Here is the result. So we see that now the system is answering total customer receipt, not exactly with the same quantity or with the same quantity, okay? And with a consequence on transportation, of course, and lately on the production, where we will see here some change, like here, we've seen a change. And definitely on the capacity, which now is even surging much more because of those big quantities. So the different option that you have in IVP heuristics scenario is to adjust and say, no, I'm not going to produce 2,500 here. I will produce 500 here and rerun a new heuristics to consider this, uh, these changes. It is so now the system is considering 500 as an input for the production and disregard the quantity. So meaning that I will not be able, of course, to deliver the demand. And I, I am now on the factory going negative, depending the periods. And you see that the production plan now equates equates exactly my, my adjustment, except outside my adjustment. Therefore, the capacity has also been adjusted to this with a very flat demand but still over the available capacity. So that concludes the, the, the presentation of the time series capabilities and particularly for the heuristics. We'll have dedicated video for the optimizer and the finite, uh, finite heuristics as well later. For the time being, heuristics only. And we've seen, we've gone through this network. We've seen the demand. How is it then transformed into dependent demand? And how do we resolve and decide by adjusting the quantities in order to provide later a constraint supply and even the constraint demand. We are finished for today. Thanks for watching and think of subscribing in YouTube. And of course, if you can give us a, a like, that's our salary for, for your time. Thank you much and see you soon.